Um, yeah, so were there any other women um, in, in the lineup? Uh, Ross or Tom, that you think are worth a mention, or you know that ring with Nick? I was going to say, we haven't really talked about Lily Partridge, and she obviously ran, was it 32 30, 32 33 last week for a 10k? So she's quite clearly going well. And when you think about, you know, she'll be tapering down and, and she's obviously ready to go. So, and she's ran under, she ran under 229 in the past, she has. So she's clearly she's able to do it. So I would say definitely I uh, wouldn't be writing her off. And like like it was Tom, one you or Lloyd said, it was, Lloyd, I think it was you saying, the women's race is probably going to be, they're both going to be very exciting, both going to be brilliant. We know that. But like you say, the women's race is so open that it's going to be absolute fascinating watch. And I think I agree with you, Tom, actually, that they might all be together at 30K and then that's when the race is going to start. You know what I mean? Someone's Someone's going to start to make those moves. Yeah, and, and and for those that are watching, you know how why do we mention a third, you know a ten k time? Um, it, it's quite interesting. Well, there's a few things that are quite interesting. In normal circumstances, without COVID, all of these athletes would have ran a half marathon somewhere, so we could actually be looking at their half marathon. So we're actually limited on information here. Um, with that ten k, you don't really know what it's going to tell you because I mean she's she's coached by Alan Story, I think, and. Alan used to coach me for a bit when I was at uni at St Mary's, um, you know, and he's used to sort of some decent mileage as well. So, you know, I was going to say she wouldn't have been, she wouldn't, she'll have, she's run 32, 33, but she wouldn't have been training for a 10K. She's done that off marathon training. I imagine probably in quite high, if what I know about Alan's training and tapering and perhaps like what Tom and stuff do, I think she'd only will have started tapering after that race, like two weeks out kind of thing. So I think. Like you say, once you tape as legs freshen up, she's obviously got the strength there, then um, it could be could be interesting. Yeah, I mean, the thing the thing with that, Ross, is, you know, you look at that 10K race and we don't know what to judge it. Normally these athletes during COVID would, would do a half marathon. So we'd have a better judge from it. But, you know, you're looking at that 10K, which was done on a track. Did she, did she ease down for it? Or was it all part of her coach's normal, um, you know, normal high mileage week? And it sort of finished off as um, as a session from that sort of thing. Um, so, you know, I mean, you know, that, that 30, 32, 33, I mean, you know, I mean, she's probably 68, you know, 68, 8-ish shape even for a half marathon. It, even if you call it 70, right? Like, let's just, even yeah. if you play, say, call it 70, your marathon equa- equation roughly double it plus five minutes, mm-hmm. that's 225, you know, and a bit of leeway there, then you think... Surely she's good for a, a sub two a sub two twenty nine or a two twenty nine. You know, definitely a sub two two thirty. So if she's going to be there, she's got that ten k speed in the legs, which you referenced earlier. You know, this race could really kick on at thirty k. Then she also won that race as well. She won that ten k um, yeah, quite quite convincingly. She won. And it was five. a small field. You know, there was only four. I yeah. think there was only four four women. Actually, our Sarah Aston, who, who who works with us in the office, she she was in that race. Um, so we we had reporters and sources right on the scene of it. Um, you know, um, doing it as well. And um, yeah, I mean, you know, you're absolutely right. We what what else can we judge it off of? You know, how many Instagram posts some of these athletes are doing to judge from how confident they are um, or, or not? It's so different, so difficult to judge how how that everyone's uh, been training during this that's one of the most annoying things i find as a fan you never know how people are going you know elite athletes are so secretive about their training but realistically they, they, all they lie all they lie yeah but they, these men and women at this level there's not going to be too many uh, things that are different in their training then most of most of them are going to be doing similar volume similar sorts of sessions but you know you're not going to be starting an Olympic trial unless, race. Uh, unless you're week. Paul Pollock, 40 miles a week. Yeah, I read that. That was incredible. Yeah. That was um, mind-boggling. Uh, but no, I, I agree with you that like most people will be doing same sort of work week in, week out, with some slight variations in how they approach it, you know? The, um, the, just a couple of things to add before we move on to the men's race as well. Um, we mentioned Sarah Ingalls as well, and something's just come to me. You know, most of these athletes would actually go to altitude training, and 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 a very few of them have because of COVID and and not, and not being able to go abroad. But Sarah Ingalls has probably been at altitude in 
in the States. I don't know if she's at Flagstaff or anything like that, but she's probably been at altitude as well. So there, there might be, you know, depending on where you've been you know, based as a, a, in, in training. And one of the one of the men athletes, when we go on to that in a second, have been in Kenya for four months. And you're thinking, hmm, you know, well, that... When did she get back? When did she land? Um, I, well, I mean, she, you know, she's she's had to have come back and um, and and done a small amount of quarantine, but it would have been. That's you know. the thing with with the altitude to really get the, the real benefits of it. It's they say you've got two weeks. Obviously, you're going to benefit from you know added fitness and being up there, but to get that immediate kind of surge, that boost on race day, like for me when I used to come back from altitude, I had to race within three days and I would fly. I'd have a great one. Or it had to be two weeks because I would have a, a crap period, like 10 days. I'd feel really crappy. Oh, can we swear? Sorry. Uh, it would feel really crappy. But like, yeah, so it depends when she's, when she's, because I, I do think with altitude, you know, it is, it's a fantastic way to go. But I think a lot of the benefits of altitude camps are more training camp mentality as well. Like you're going away, no distractions, and you get that benefit. Like you say, when you come down after three days or two weeks or whatever your sweet spot is. But if she's been back for a month, it's like I'm not sure like how much more of a benefit she would have. Yeah. Cool. So is her is her is her name Sarah Ingalls or Sarah Inglis? I, I think it's Sarah Ingalls. And really and and I've been pronouncing it wrong as well. Sorry, Sarah, if you're watching. Um I've done a few interviews and pronounced it wrong as well. So Sarah Ingalls. Oh, I'm so sorry, um, Sarah. I know it's it's we'll, we'll, I never we'll... said it wrong, Sarah, so I'm not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. This coming Friday, live from Kew Gardens. 26th of March, you can catch the Muller British Athletics Marathon and Race Walk Trials. Race Walk kicks off at 6am, Marathon kicks off at 8am. You can watch all of the action live on BBC Sport, the iPlayer and the British Athletics website.